Well, so y'all take a second. Uh, don't go anywhere. Y'all hang out just a second, all right? All right. Okay, Dad. Um, so about how long do you think it will take for you to make the telescope work for us to see the things in the sky? Just, just give me a second, okay, sweetie? I'm going to play Pokemon. <laughs> You guys are going to totally be amazed and awed by what God has done when you gaze at the heavens above and when you read what His Holy Word says. Did you realize that the ancient king of Israel, King David, spoke, saying, The heavens declare the glory of God. The skies proclaim the work of His hands. Going back further in Scripture to the first book of the Bible, Moses, one of the greatest prophets of Israel, quoted the actual words of God when he said, let there be lights in the expanse of the heavens to separate the day from the night, and let them be for signs and for seasons, and for days and years. Job, the prophet of old, who held fast to the Lord during much tribulation, declared of God that he is the maker of the bear and Orion, the Pleiades and the constellations of the south. He spread out the northern skies over empty space. He suspends the earth over nothing. God himself most eloquently declares to the prophet Isaiah, Heaven is my throne, and the earth is my footstool. And don't forget the words of the apostle Paul when he said, He, Jesus, is the image of the invisible God, the firstborn of all creation. For by him, the Lord Jesus, all things were created that are in heaven and that are on earth, visible and invisible. 
all things were created through him and for him. Kids, Jesus truly is the God of wow. We worship the one who made each and every one of us. Do you realize that you and I are actually made in the image of God? Not the animals, not the planets, not even the stars in heaven. Each of you are worth more than anything in this world because we are the only ones made in his image. However, because we as mankind sinned and broke that intimate relationship with him, he amazingly planned a way to fix what we broke. As a matter of fact, he planned it even before we broke it. He who put on flesh by becoming the most humble of men, who was without sin, who took upon himself the sins of the world, your sins, my sins, by suffering on a cruel cross, who shed his innocent blood, which is the only thing can wash your sins and my sins away. He was dead and placed in a lonely grave for three days. But you know what? He didn't stay there. On the third day, the Savior of the world was raised back to life and now sits at the right hand of the throne of God. He even said he's preparing a place for each of us who knows him as Savior and King. And he promised that he would return in all his glory, a glory far greater than all the stars of heaven that we now see. And when he comes back, he says every eye will see him coming down in the clouds of heaven and know that he is the king of all of creation.